fibre optics and digital communications in Britain, where it all began. Digital technologies alongside fibre optic communication is a field in which the UK is a groundbreaker. The history of emerging digital technologies is not usually associated with Britain. They are more associated with East Asia, which inundated the market with low-priced electronics in the 80s and 90s, or the US, who gave birth to the transistor and produced hardware and software developers who have been highly influential in recent times. However, without Britain, two of the most authoritative and important technologies would not exist. These include mobile, computing and the triumph of the Internet. Britain's innovations could still progress computing further and even give a greater understanding to the human brain. The World Wide Web, invented by British computer scientist Tim Berners-Lee, is highly noted. But what is not as commonly known is that Britain is also the birthplace of fibre-optic communications, a technology which enables transmission of vast quantities of data around the world. Optical fibre was first developed in the 1960s by a team including a scientist named Richard Epworth. He commented that the web and internet are only possible because the cost of communicating is very low and independent of distance. This team that made optical fibre communication into a reality did so at Standard Telecommunications Laboratories, STL. Digital communication offered low-loss communication, therefore had great potential for further research. A favourite choice for communication was optical, which was deemed perfect for digital, but not for electronics. Epworth said, if you're transmitting digitally, the signal is either on or off, and any distortion doesn't matter at all. It's exactly the same idea that means Morse code signalling was so successful, he added. All that matters is whether there is any signal or not, and visible light Morse works at the speed of light. What fibre optics promised, he said, was simply increasing the range of the visible light Morse idea and sending it around corners, plus the increase in speed compared with electrical signalling through copper. The invention of the laser increased interest, and transmission through free space was studied, but it's too affected by weather, so some sort of guide for the light was obviously needed. However, in terms of electronics, the stance was, if you're transmitting an analogue signal electrically by manipulating a current along a wire, then as soon as you have any interference or loss of signal quality, you have problems. You don't need much distortion at all before the signal becomes incomprehensible. In 1842, in Paris, Daniel Collodon, a professor at the University of Geneva, and Jacques Babinet, a specialist in optics, showed that light followed the curvature of water, therefore bending inside a stream of water. This method was used in the 1920s with glass fibres to provide dentistry with illumination and medical examinations. In the 60s, STL in Harlow were trying to make optical communication work alongside other researchers. The field was an expanse to be explored and early research used a hollow air-filled tube as the medium for transmission, a light pipe. Epworth explained, for a while it looked like the winning technique would be one using microwaves after work involving planar thin films using optical waveguides where the majority of the signal would be outside the transmission medium. Charles Quen Cao, a researcher from Hong Kong, had the initial discovery whilst working with George Hockham, an expert in microwaves. Together, they hypothesised visible light transmission would be suited to a purer glass than was currently accessible. He recognised that the pureness of the material was the issue, not the key physics. In 2009, the couple won a share in the Nobel Prize for Physics due to their instrumental paper, published over 50 years ago and was observed as the starting point of practical optical fibres. Travelling the world to get interest within his technology, Cow didn't succeed commercially until a pure ultra-clear silica from oxygen and elemental silicon was produced by Bell Labs. 
The first transmittance system between Hitchin and Stevenage was the UK's involvement in the early usage of the technology. However, as this was multinational and no commercial remainder of STL exists, the status of the innovation being from the UK has been dropped from public knowledge, so Epworth believes. Other leading digital innovations are more in the public consciousness due to commercialisation. Stephen Ferber led a team who developed the RISC Reduced Instruction Set Computing Microprocessor at ARM, Acorn RISC Machines. At a time when chip making was dominated by American powerhouse IBM, Ferber spoke in 2010 to the engineer and explained that they had very rigid thoughts on how the architecture of the chip should work. By not manufacturing chips themselves, the ARM team came to the conclusion they could break away from these set ideas. From this, a processor was developed that used far less power than its competition, which meant market domination within the tablet, laptop and mobile industries.